there was a there was a husband and a wife who were blind. And one day the husband was listening to a commercial on the radio. They said they just came out for the first time with eye transplants. Just like you do a heart transplant and a kidney transplant and a lung transplant, that they could take the eyes of a person who's brain dead and transplant it to you and even though, and you'll be able to see. Just came out. He, he was listening to this and he said and they have a phone they had a phone number. So he told his wife, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! We could get you eyesight back. I'm gonna call the number. And he calls the number and he calls her and says they only have one set of eyes available right now. Go to the hospital and they'll, they'll do the eye transplant. She's like, no, what about you? You can't see either. He said, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. Okay, she's all excited. Imagine a person who's blind who only sees darkness is not going to be able to see herself or, and, and, and the world. So she goes to the hospital with her husband and he takes her to the hospital and they do the eye transplant. And the doctors take off the bandages and it's amazing. She's able to see. And she goes to work and the guy, the boss that she worked with really liked her. And now that she could see she wasn't blind anymore, he's thinking maybe I could steal her away from her husband. He says to her, listen, your husband is, doesn't work, whatever it is. What I could do for you is if you marry me, I will take you on a tour of the world. We'll go to all the exotic places. We'll do the safaris. But you got to leave him. And she's like, pretty sad, but the bottom line is she wants to see the world. So, he comes home and there's a letter on his bed. Dear Chaim, I'm so sorry, but now that I could see, I really want to see the world. And my boss offered to me that if I get divorced and marry him, and I know that you love me and you want the best for me, um, you can read the letter? Please, what? Okay. Listen, listen, oh. listen. Um, okay. Um, if, you, if, you, if it's okay with you, please don't make this harder than it has to be. Please leave the apartment, take your stuff. And um, I'm sorry that I had to hurt you this way. Okay. He's very upset, but what could he do? He packs his stuff up and leaves her a letter. I want to read you all the letter that he left for her. She comes home, he's gone. His, his jacket, suits, pants, everything gone out of the house. She's gonna get her divorce and she's gonna marry this guy. She's got her eyes, she wants to see the world. I want to read you the letter. Dear Miriam, I just want you to know how much I love you. I want you to know that I have given you my eyes so that you can see me and our future children. But now that you have left me, please use my eyes the best that you can for yourself. Love Chaim. He was never blind. He could always see. He never let her know when he married her that he was any different than her. And he felt that, you know what, until now I could see. I don't need to tell her that. There were no eyes available to give her. There was a waiting list of 20 years. He gave his eyes to her. And what did he, she do with his eyes that he gave to her to see him? All she saw was this new guy. And she left everything. That's a very sad story. That's not the ending 
that we want. He gave his eyes so she could see him, and then she went off with a guy. Wow, that didn't work out well. Girls, and everyone who's listening, every morning, I hope, I don't know how many of you daven, but whoever davens, every single morning, this is the same story we do to Hashem. Elokai Mishaman Shinasat to be. The eyes that you gave me, the soul that you gave me, Atta Barasa, you created it. Atta Yitzata, you formed it, this beautiful soul. Atta Nafachta Bikirbi, you put the soul in me. But Atta Asid Litlameni, and you will one day take it from me, and one day return to me. Kolzmancha and Neshama Bikirbi, as long as I'm alive and I have this beautiful soul, these beautiful eyes. Modein Lid Fenecha, I thank you, Hashem Alakai Alakai Alasai. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me my neshama this morning. Every day we make a bracha. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me my neshama this morning. And what do we do with those eyes? We don't use it to see Hashem. She didn't use it to see her husband. We go off with another guy. With the Yetzirah, we use those eyes that Hashem gave me this morning to see him, to go watch a movie. The mouth that he gave me to talk, I use it against him. I talk Lashon Hara. The Neshama that he gave me, I use it against him. You gave me life and all day long I do have Eris. Why are you any different than this girl who got this pair of eyes and then instead of using it to see her husband when he gave it to her, she uses it to see everything else. God gave us life to see him, to be with him and we use it to be with everybody else. Same letter from Hashem. Same letter. So what we say in the morning is Hashem, I will use this neshama, I will use this beautiful thing that you gave me, that you gave me life, I will use it to see you. I will use it to hear you. I will use it to taste you through the things that you have created. I will use it to feel you. All my five senses I will use to be connected to you, HaKadosh Baruch Instead, he gives us this beautiful thing and we use it to go off with the guy at work, so to say. With the Yetzirah, with the Satan. You don't want to be the girl in this story. That someone gave you eyes to see and then you run out on the person that gave you the eyes to see. But isn't that something that we do every day? We need to think about that. When we get up, or we go to sleep at night, that Akash Baruch you gave me the ability to see, I used it to see people in trouble, to see other people's pain, to see how I could help. You gave me a mouth to talk, to give other people chizik. You gave me an ear to hear, to be able to sit and listen to when people talk to me. You gave me a mouth to, 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 to eat, and I make a bracha on everything that I eat. You gave me hands and feet, you gave me feet to go, not to a movie theater or to places I should not go. You gave me feet to go to seminary, shul, and to help my parents and to do what I have to. That's why you gave me hands. And then at night we could say, Shem says, you know what? I gave you my eyes. I gave you my speech. I gave you a soul. And she's using it for good stuff. Let's give it again to her tomorrow. We say it every morning in a kind of Shema. So I'm challenging everyone who's listening. Try it. You're not going to die. 30 days. No non-Jewish music. Listen to any Jewish music you want, but no non-Jewish music. And come back to me in 30 days from today. What's today? February 3rd? March 3rd. Yeah, March 3rd. And tell me, Rabbi Wallstein, you're off your rocker. Nothing changed in my life. Or Rabbi Wallstein, whoa. Whoa, something changed. A little bit. You know what? The only way, the only way you realize that you smell from fish is when you leave the fish store. In the fish store, nobody smells some fish. You know that? You go to the fish store, nobody smells some fish. The minute you walk out, woo! Where were you? In a fish store? Until you step out, you don't know what you stepped into. All right, so we get together in 30 days, and you'll let me know. Mitzvah Hashem, Yishev and Bracha, and a wonderful, amazing day.